uh, the first day of class. So Memrise is a free um, app available from both uh, iTunes and Google Play and also the Amazon, um, what is Amazon's website? You know their app store, I guess it's called. So it's available on all three of those. Um, it's absolutely free and um, it's, um, it's an app that helps people memorize things in the long term is the idea. Uh, so this is how Memrise describes itself. It says that you find a course you like and there are thousands and thousands of courses on there and they're being, that number is being increased daily by the users. So users actually create courses on here. They're all free and uh, they're all, uh, they're available, many of them in other languages. So if you were, if you were uh, French trying to learn English, they would have uh, courses for that. But I guess primarily it's a language learning app, but as I will show you, it can be used in many other areas. So it has a, a few different ways of teaching you, or teaching the learner uh, new concepts, I guess, which is generally vocabulary terms. And then it has um, a competitive element, which uh, allows the learners to compete against each other in uh, memorizing and retaining information. So the actual sort of competitive game element of the app is that uh, the learner receives input, which memorize terms as one mem. So that's a seed that they're trying to plant. So this is how they envision what they're doing. Um, you're tested on the input, so the seed grows. You review the input, you water it, and you try to earn more points. So this is the, the overall flow of how the app works for the learner. So it's supposed to be fun, lighthearted, a uh, means of, of learning a language, well, the vocabulary of a language, without really straining or um, just memorizing just looking at lists. So here's what they say. Every word begins life as a seed. I'm just reading this part. You nurture it through reviews and tests until it grows strong, takes root, and blossoms into a flower in your long-term memory. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure it really works that well, but it does work. It does seem to work for my students. Uh, I would say out of all, all of my students, roughly half of them have tried it and it's received glowing reviews. So I've had many students tell me that the only reason they pass their vocabulary quizzes is because of this app. So at least, at least they're able to retain it for a, some period of time. Right. So the actual science behind this, it's something like uh, Krashen's uh, input hypothesis, I plus one. You're just giving them one more bit of uh, comprehensible input each time. And actually, they receive five new vocabulary words at a time. So it's, it's quite similar. And then, um, yes, these are known as MEMS. And they're supposed to make vivid sensory memories. And I'll show you how they do that. They have uh, both audio and visual files attached to the vocabulary word to help them retain it. They also use uh, tests made by the, the course creator. You can actually adapt the testing methods so that you can decide what the student is tested on. And then they use an algorithm to decide when the learner needs to be uh, tested on the same bit of information. Again, uh, obviously repetitive testing over period, longer and longer periods of time uh, helps people to retain it in the long term. And you know there are some algorithms out there that these sort of companies use to try to promote that long term retention. So they claim that they have exotic algorithms that they're using. So I suppose they do. What does Krashen mean? Or Krashen like I... I like oh, I Stephen Krashen was a... Oh right, Stephen Krashen is a linguist um, out in California somewhere. And uh, he came up with this input hypothesis. And I can tell that the creators of this app sort of based it on this hypothesis. That each uh, learner, um, if they receive 
whatever input they already have plus one will be able to retain it better. So you're just trying to give small increments of input for the learner so that they are able to retain it. That's Krashen's idea. It's uh, from the 1980s, I guess. But it's very popular, this I plus one hypothesis in language learning. So uh, I, I guess most people think it works to some extent, right? It's very hard to quantify plus one, though. <laughs> when you're talking about what does plus one mean? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? It's it's a it, that's Krashen's uh, Krashen's way of describing it. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I think for each person it means something slightly different. Unfortunately, are we able to engage a little bit in questioning? Or oh, absolutely. Well, it's because in my field uh, or in looking at software for students to learn. It's like trying to find a point where it's challenging, where mm -hmm. it's not too easy but not too hard. And then once right. they find that point, then you make a little adjustment, you know, and so it gets a little harder. Right. And then if they, it, depending on if they get a criteria like three out of four, they move on. If they uh, get like less than 50 percent, go back. I don't know if that somehow is similar or to relate to this. Not really. Um, That's why I thought it would sound different. This one doesn't really have much to do with evaluating right. their ability. It's only um, introducing new information. That's all. It's new input. Okay. So just when it's introduced, but it has nothing to do with evaluation. Really. No, okay. just, this is a very basic theory. How to know that its material gets more difficult. But this is sure. not about difficulty level, just right. a concept. But then, sure. what does it mean? Again, I'm trying to understand what does that plus one mean? I have sure. information, right. and I want to learn new information. But right. that new information, is, is it going to be a little more difficult? Is it just half a level? So that's trying to conceptualize and understand what that means. Right. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I think uh, it's it's not very clear. <laughs> it's just not generally not clear. I think <laughs> Crash had left it sort of ambiguous on purpose, okay. so that you can you can create your own plus one, but okay. Uh, Krashen is popular and unpopular with others, so <laughs> there are reasons for that. <laughs> I mean, sometimes they call it, they call them crash and burn, so, <laughs> unfortunately, so, <laughs> some people, in some circles, I'm not saying I do. <laughs> but uh, I think this app, though, might be uh, closer to what you're talking about, so it might fulfill some of those needs. So as we go along, you'll see that. But their philosophies are... Uh, a little bit different than the ones probably that, that we have, but first of all, they say anyone can learn anything, and these are taken directly from the Memrise website when they introduce themselves. So it's a very anti-critical period hypothesis idea, or sensitive period, so that once you're past puberty, it's more difficult to learn a language. They don't agree, so they they believe that absolutely anyone can learn anything. So I guess that's. It's very good for your self-confidence when you're taking these courses, and maybe the students will agree and uh, continue. That's good. Together we're smarter, so there's sort of a group mentality in creating the courses. So you have someone who creates a course, and then the learners customize it. So that's quite interesting, I think, for the learners. And I'll show you how that happens. They add visual and audio prompts themselves to help them re remember, and you can use other people's. So you decide which one you want to use. And then, um, let's say your memory of the garden, not a storehouse. So again, with the, the idea of the flowering of uh, your memory. And school shouldn't interfere with education. <laughs> right. So um, this is very much learner-centered, is what they're trying to say, rather than, uh, I guess, based on some sort of societal norm. So they want to really make the learner feel that they're in control. So I think the students actually enjoy that. Is this application feasible for all different languages? Oh, yes. Yes, I'll show you in a second. <laughs> Certainly. So this is, this is just what you mentioned here. So if you look at the, uh, the different kinds of courses, so the most popular ones will appear first on the home page, on their front page. And you can see French has 294,000 users. That's quite a few. Yeah. Quite but, a number. Yes, it is. So French is the most popular 
and Italian is up there, <laughs> amazingly, and I think it's Portuguese too. But uh, there are other areas in which this can be used. Are you all language related? By biology. Oh, biology. Oh, great. Okay. Well, I'll be chemistry today. I'm glad, I'm glad I picked one that wasn't language related, just to show you. So if you click on these, uh, these um, not tabs, these, uh, yes, if you click on these different uh, menu items on the left, you open maths and science, and it's obviously British because they say maths, which is nice, isn't it? <laughs> Mathematics and science. If you click on chemistry, this is what comes up. Everyone wants to memorize the periodic table <laughs> at some point. So you see uh, six and a half thousand people have tried it with this app. So that's probably pretty good. And there are other periodic tables out there, multiple periodic tables. So there, there are many kinds of uh, courses. But you can see the top categories they list on the left are English, Spanish, no surprise, French, German, Portuguese, Italian, Russian. I would probably, I would hope that Japanese was in there because I teach Japanese, but didn't make the top ten. It looks like so. <laughs> That's too bad. So when I go to my home page, <coughs> this is what I see. So that's me, and um, I see how many people I'm following and how many people are following me because it's a sort of a competitive environment. You're trying to outdo the others which might be very good for your students. If they know each other well, they might actually want to you know, beat each other in this little competition. Of course, you don't get anything for winning, <laughs> except, winning. except bragging rights, I guess. you know. Okay. So these are how, so how many words I've learned over the course of my playing around with this app, and how many points I've gained learning or reviewing these words. And uh, this is your home with a dashboard. Um, my courses, these are ones I'm learning and teaching, and then the leaderboard. So pinned courses are the courses that will show up on your mobile device. And others, which are not pinned, you can take as many courses as you want. So the ones that are not pinned won't show up on your mobile device. But I think they allow four. So that's a pretty good number. So if you have four different types of courses you want them to take, for example, in Japanese, I could, I could give them a course in Chinese characters, and I could give them another course in vocabulary. And so for me, I could make specific courses. Um, you might also need to make specific types of courses for different, uh, different uh, things that you want them to know. So I was playing around with Irish for a while, and you can see that I have 52 that I'm supposed to review, <laughs> but I haven't been there in a while, so not going to happen. <laughs> you can, it shows you where to get the app. This is the website page. So the app looks a little bit different. It's simpler. So can one do this, because I'm now looking at myself now, I'm being self-centered, <laughs> for like my son who's learning French. Yes. But can he do it on his computer without going yep. on the app? So it can be yes. on a computer or on an app. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, you can make a private course that only he can see. Yeah. And you can he can make his own course. I don't understand what making a course means. <laughs> because, for example, I look there. Yeah. I teach audiology. Yeah. But it, it's not listed uh, under a science. So right. Do I have to create the course myself? If I oh, yes. If I wanted this student to do that, that's where I have to hear how much work that is. It's not bad. It's not, it's bad. not bad. No, no. OK. So here's. Here's the competitive aspect of it. So you can see the leaderboard, and it tells you by week, month, and all time. So somebody's feeling, I don't like that very much, but <laughs> most, of these people, most of these people are my students, and that's why I'm following them, or they're following me, or something like that. I'm not 100% sure how I got my leaderboard, but it just shows up, so we're all competing. So. All right, so when you go to um, learning preferences, if you remember on this home screen, you see learning preferences on the mid right there. If you click on that, you can choose how you want to learn. So you can be quizzed. Uh, you can learn five new words at a time, 10, 15, 25, however many you want. And you can 
change the number of words that you review in each session. So this is the standard, 5 and 25, but there's advanced, which is something like 10 and 50, or, and then there's custom. So you can choose. The student, the learner can choose, not the teacher. You're just giving them the input, and then they decide how how they want to learn it. Yeah, how they want to play it. Right, so it's a game. And then uh, they can decide if they like these sorts of tests. These are tapping tests, which is um, when they're learning a new word, they get jumbled letters, and they have to arrange the letters to make the word. So if you go back to uh, your courses, which is, again, on this screen, see your courses under home? Your courses. I'm learning some, but I'm also teaching some. And if you want to make a course, you have this create a course, and you just click on create. It's very simple. These are some courses that I've created that I'm using. So these two are actually uh, public, which means that the students are able to access them and use them. These I'm still editing. I haven't made them yet. And I have others that I've been playing around with. So you can just sort of play around with them as much as you want. So if you want to look at your course, you have to click Edit. And this comes up. So this shows you your course. Uh, I note that I titled this AU First Year Japanese Vocabulary. I did not title it with the name of the textbook because the name of the textbook is copyrighted. So if you title it, vocabulary words are not copyrighted, right? <laughs> There's no way you could copyright every word in a language. So I titled it with the course title or something similar so that my students would be able to find it. And you, I would recommend you do the same so that you don't have any sort of copyright infringement, of course. Although it's, it's obviously public information because it's just vocabulary words. Right, so uh, once you've created your course like this, you have levels, databases, which I've never used, but I'm sure you can upload databases. Contributors, people you want to work with, and the details of the course, which I'll show you in a second. But you can add a level. That's how you start a course. You add a level. So you have all these different levels students are trying to work through. And then the nice thing about it is you can drag and drop these levels by just clicking on here. So you can rearrange them easily. So if you want the students to do this one first, and then you change your mind and you want this one first, you can easily just drag and drop. And all the data will go with it. You drag and drop item within a, le a lesson to another, or the whole lesson has to be dragged and drop? Um, that would be, I don't think that's possible. Okay. But what you can do is, um, I would recommend you just rename the lesson right. <laughs> in that instance if you have that much data. But I'll show you it's very simple to add data. So this is under the details tab here. So when you make your course and you have these levels, first you have to make it public. You can make it unlisted, which is private, like your son's French course, yes. <laughs> right? Or incomplete, you're still working on it. Title it, give a description. And um, you have to choose a category from uh, which language they're learning, from what language, something like that. Mine happens to be languages. Yours is biology, so it'll be different. But yeah, it'll give you different options. OK. And then if you go well, back. When you say category, so let's say you, you create a category they don't have. Can, is there a thing called other you can type in? I believe so. I've so never tried how it. How would I create something that's not listed? Right. I believe you can. I believe you can. But uh, I don't know 100%. I've never tried to do that. Um, I think Japanese learners are probably a little bit quicker to pick up on any kind of newer technology because they just tend to be that sort of people. But uh, maybe with audiology, I, I would imagine. Yeah. Y you can easily put it in another category. And I don't want to call it. What would I call a science? Yeah. And it's a specialty. It's like biology uh, there, but there right. are all these variations. I mean, like, I don't know. If they, let's say you had abnormal psychology. That would be mm -hmm. another great. That would be a category, but I know they wouldn't right. do that because that's so specific. They might. And uh, if not, they might add it. 
if you just contact them, I'm sure they would add a category. Yes. They want to uh, improve the app, I believe. It seems like they're really proactive in promoting and improving their app. So, okay. Uh, so if we create anything, we can make it. Uh, we can either restrict it to the students, or we can make it public to the whole world. Sure. So that would res restricted mean kind of like, how do you restrict it to only let's say your class? Oh, you make it unlisted, unlisted. and then you give your students the link. That's the only way. You can do the same with uh, YouTube. You can make an unlisted YouTube video and just give your students the link, so it's no one else can find it. <laughs> Things like that. So <clears throat> that's it's private for, for all intents and purposes. Uh, so if you go back to your uh, your course that you created, so this one has 12 levels, each of which corresponds to a chapter in the textbook that we use over the first year. Uh, if you want to edit one of these lessons, one of these levels, they're called lessons in the textbook, so I just kept it that way. You just click on show, hide, show, and here I have the list of vocabulary that I've uploaded. So you want to decide how you test. So I'm testing on the knowledge of this first column uh, by giving them a prompt from the second column. That's what this means. So test on this, prompt with this. And you can edit it by clicking on there, and a little pop-up. A little pop-up will come up, and it will tell you, it will give you some options, and you can just swap them easily if you want to. But it does say that if you do this while people are taking the course, their data will be lost. So just something to keep in mind. Right. How do you make a course? How do you add all these terms? Right. It's really easy. You upload them. You click on the advanced tab. Both add words. All right. You make an Excel sheet. <clears throat> In your Excel sheet, you have the first column of uh, the things you want to test on, second column, the prompts. And you just simply copy and paste <laughs> into this little window here. Copy and paste the data and uh, just leave these as they are and it will work with any Excel sheet and then you just press add and it all appears just like this so very simple very simple and the nice thing about language learning is um, if, if you're teaching a language sorry but if you're teaching a language you can often find these lists online so people have already put these lists online that's what I did I looked for my textbook uh, lesson one vocabulary, Yankee is what it's called, Yankee lesson one vocabulary. Someone already had a list up. I copied the list into Excel, and then I copied from Excel onto here, and it took me about five minutes. So you can you can really make a course quite quickly if you do that. And if you're using uh, biology notes that people have online, you can easily do the same. So this is what the student, the learner, will see. <coughs> So here's my, uh, this is what I'm testing them on, and this is my prompt. These are things that I, this is what I uploaded. Now this is actually contributed by Alluria. So they add their own pictures. So say student, so someone made this little gift file. And uh, they, can, they can use these uh, arrows to decide which of these images they like best, that most readily identifies with this term for them. So they can they can decide. It's all based on the learner. And they can upload their own picture if they want. Something that they like. So they choose one, then they click next. And then they're tested on it. Yes ma'am. So if they upload their own picture, is it do they only see that picture in their account? Or everyone's friends? Everyone. everyone. Picture? Okay, because I was playing around with biology and there's no pictures. Oh no. So but I could have students Memes, you know? <laughs> right. You could easily do that. Okay. Easily. So that's good. Is like Google Images and the that's right. Yeah. And is there, so when it said choose the mem, is like, is there, where is it linked? How would you do this to it, uh, upload a picture? Yes, the learner will see a, a prompt, upload your own, okay. at the end. If you keep clicking to the end, you'll see upload your own in this box. Okay. And if there are none, you should see upload your own somewhere. You might not be able to do it on the mobile app. So you might only be able to upload it yeah. online. So. 
So they, they see uh, what they're going to be tested on and the prompt, and then they're tested. And when they're tested, they have a time limit. So the little Pac-Man mouth gets bigger, I suppose. And uh, they have the prompt plus four different words that they've already learned, supposedly. All right, and if they choose the wrong one, this is what happens. So I did this on purpose. Um, chose the wrong one, the right one shows up in green, and then they go back to this. <laughs> so they are once again reminded of what it should have been. And that happens as many times as they make a mistake. So they'll have to go back over and over and over. Uh, some of the files <coughs> are already exist in Memrise. So people have already uploaded audio files and here you go. There are no memes you have to learn. Be the first to create one. That's what they'll see. Yeah. So sometimes there are already audio files, and you can choose. You can select which audio file you want to to work with this this uh, bit of data. So I just chose the first one, and it's just some native speaker saying, "Ah oh, no, it's not. not a big deal." Um, yeah. So they hear it once, twice, and then it's over, but they can repeat it if they want to by clicking on it. So that's nice. And you can upload your own audio files. So you can create an audio file? Yep. Yeah, or any, I'm thinking like everybody ought to be in a month. Rather than vocabulary, it might be a concept mm -hmm. that we want them to remember. But the class, and then we can either <coughs> explain it, or that we say that, yeah. that, that an audio file say this is what it's about. Right. Sure. And Picture. You could do that. Or pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, phonetics. Yeah, with phonetics, of course. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so here you can see, uh, for example, this is my course. Someone already uploaded two files for this one. And you can just choose which one you like. Or you can not have audio at all. It's up to you. You can uh, decide on what attributes you want them to be tested on to learn. So yeah, you can add the audio. So you can have many, more than one file, audio file that you can click on. Well, and the students can, let's say there were three different, you know, con let's say one concept with three different uh, explanations or relations. Because I'm trying to understand what that two files means. The two files, uh, two files means that Memrise already has two files in their online database. Oh. And you have to choose one. Yeah, choose as the, one. As the creator, course creator. And that one file that you choose yeah. will play. Yeah, okay. So you can't give them different audio <laughs> options, unfortunately. Okay. What you can do, though, is, uh, and I've been trying to play around with this, you can give them just an audio prompt. Like, so this is gone. You remove this, just an audio prompt, and have them, have them decide which uh, you tested on other, other ideas that you've already introduced. That would learn. That would work very well with uh, in Japanese. Them learning the letters of the alphabet. You see, so I could make a sound, and then they hear the sound and choose the correct letter. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. All right. So that's what you see, and then. Um, yeah, I suppose, and then they they click on next when they're happy with their choices. And then they're tested again, and the cycle repeats. So memorize is pretty simple, I guess. Um, I had another couple of another couple of programs or apps, I should say, that I wanted to introduce, just in case you're interested. Can yes, ma'am. Ask you a couple questions. Absolutely. So do you, how do you integrate this into your classroom? Do you make this a requirement? Is it graded? Is it just for fun? It's just for fun. It's just for fun. And it's so, how many what percentage of your students do you think have used it? Have uh, 50 percent. I asked them. Yeah. I did. And uh, I actually noticed quiz grades go up yeah. substantially. Well, yes. I guess since you link, since you're creating the course and linking <coughs> the content to what it's, yes. it's like a no-brainer. It's directly really. It's only 50 percent. I know. I know. And you can do it anywhere. You know, that's the nice thing. You could do it, uh, you know, on the, on the train or so at home. So it doesn't require the Wi-Fi? No. Um, <coughs> huh. No. Because, uh, with your pinned courses, I think it, it just downloads the information. Oh, okay, that's yeah. actually really nice to know. Yeah. Metro user. Right, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. So is there a maximum duration of the audio file? Again, I'm just thinking. Oh, if I, I don't to do a know. Concept versus mm -hmm. a word. So a concept might be a, a paragraph, 25 seconds worth. Can you right. do that? I imagine you could. I've never tried it. So yeah, well, you'd again, have to play again, around with that. Again, because we have a different goal, but mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I want them as they're studying and they, so you know, like you have different concepts, yeah. they're trying to remember. So, so they click or they try to say it, and then they want to hear yeah, feedback. So I'm yeah. hoping that the duration of the file is not limited to just right. You know, like yeah. one second or two seconds worth. Right. I don't think it's that short because they have full sentences. Right. But um, I don't know. <laughs> I'd, I'd be interested to find out though. Yeah. So if you do, uh, if you actually do this, please let me know. I'd yeah. love to know. I have to do it, in this, you know, like uh, in the summer or something, because it takes a little while to do it. I, I With the audio it. files. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to record them and then upload them. Right. Yeah. But as far as uh, testing uh, learner progress using this, yeah. it is possible if you have them show you their Memrise app on their phone, um, you can see exactly what levels they've completed. So that's you, one you can way. You follow them too, right? You, you can follow app. them. Yes. Um, you can follow them. I'm not sure that it'll give you all the details though, unfortunately. So it'll just tell you how many points. Site, you have to ask them to kind of show you what they've done rather than just to that. You that's know, too like much. You can just sit back and see for each individual how many levels. But again, yeah. that's something that uh, hopefully if they get feedback, uh, they can create that. Yes, that would be nice. There is a premium version, um, and it, it really just offers more tools for the learner, though. So it, tell, it shows them their progress uh, in a more detailed way. So it's not really for the course creator. In fact, I don't think this was intended to be used in higher education at all. <laughs> it was just meant for for people playing around uh, you who wanted to create their own courses, right? So, but I think it's really it, it's really adaptable to what most of us are doing probably. And my students really enjoy it, I have to say. I've had great feedback from the students regarding this app. You know, some of them tell me that it was a lifesaver, you know, because they get busy and uh, no one wants to memorize, you know, an entire page, a list. It's so abstract, you know. You just don't have to make flashcards. You don't have to make flashcards. Right. And also, with flashcards, you can cheat. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> with a quiz, you can't cheat. So that's the beautiful thing about this Memrise app. Now, I wanted to show you, actually, Anki, which has been around for a while. I'm not sure if any of you have used it before, but it, it's been around, I would say, 15 years at least online, and uh, Anki, Anki means uh, memorize in Japanese, so you can tell who it was made for, <laughs> right? A bunch of Japanese learners, and um, it is a flashcard program, but they have hundreds of thousands of decks of flashcards, uh, user-created decks up, so if you wanted to learn anything at all, you would find it here, and you don't have to create your own deck. If there's any textbook out there, there's definitely a deck for it. Someone has already made one. And they also contain audio files, I believe. I'm not, I'm not too big on using Anki for the simple fact that you can cheat. <laughs> you, you can cheat yourself. You can cheat yourself. So you can lie to yourself so easily. Because this doesn't quiz you. It shows you a card, and then uh, it asks you if you know the meaning and you say yes or no, and then it flips the card around, and then you you say, well, I knew that, or I didn't know that, test me again. So if you get bored with it, you'll just say, I knew that for every one of them, <laughs> and you won't want to, you don't want to uh, continue. So I think with Memrise, though, you can't cheat, so that's the beauty of it. And I'm not sure if you've seen this one, Duolingo. I love Duolingo. Isn't it great? It's so it's great. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Duolingo is um, is not uh, user created in any way. It is uh, it is made by this Duolingo company, and they have a number of languages, and they keep increasing the languages, which is fun. Because I told you I was playing with Irish for a little bit, and uh, it's free. All these are free apps. All these are completely free. 
but this one I think is uh, much more than just a vocabulary app. It gives you sentences that it wants you to translate. It's mostly learning through translation, but it has some nice audio prompts and things like that. So please play around with it. I don't know that it will be um, that useful for your, your classroom if you're teaching a language because it has a completely different material, you know. But um, I think your students will enjoy it, probably. It's good. It's fun. Yeah. So I just thought those might also be interesting for you. But uh, we can certainly look at Memrise. Are they only audio languages? Everybody I'm asking, a Gallaudet, like uh, where we use yes. ASL, so it would be like if they had Duolingo, and then that way, I, you know, I see a design or whatever, or, and, you know, trying to then learn it that way, but they... No sign. That yet. No, but um, they could learn the, the written language. Okay. That's all. It, you don't have to use the audio portion at all for Duolingo. You can just use the written portion. And I, I don't use the audio most of the time because I have children and if I'm playing around with it with them, I mean, I can't hear it anyway, so <laughs> they're too noisy. Oops. So, memorize. Is there a simple. Um, I guess I don't want to go over because you guys have to go to other yeah. sessions too, don't you? So, I was just gonna gonna look at it if you're interested, but it's just at memorize.com. Please play around with it. It's it's a lot of fun, and I think your students will really enjoy it. And uh, if you're interested, I will send you uh, this word file um, that you can just alter. What I did is oh, you can't see the word file for some reason. Uh oh, I guess you couldn't see the memorize online either. <laughs> uh oh, is there any way to see the word file? Well, it's it's the same piece of paper that I that I uh, sent around, but it um it has uh, links. So what I do is I just make a PDF copy and I put it on Blackboard for the students, and it has a, a link to my memorize. Uh, course, so they just click on that and go directly to it. That's that's what I do. But I will send you this <laughs> if you're interested. So uh, I guess if I could get my piece of paper back. Oh, oh, he's back. Okay, later. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm surprised so many people came actually. <laughs> you know, for an app, I was. Uh, I figured they so I'm super interested in it. Oh really? Yeah. Well yeah. I since I got my degree in Spanish hmm. way back. I wish we had had that. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Man. Oh thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. But I think if, even if you know, sometimes I say, Okay, let's say I can't do it in memory, something in my course at the end I could have a create a PowerPoint. And I can come up with concepts and put audio. I, I can simulate this memory kind of thing. I have to just so they test themselves. Okay, what is this right. concept? Yes. So it becomes a review and more active learning rather than just reading the PowerPoint. So I'm saying even if it's not what you intended, it's still going to stimulate me. Oh, that's to good. In some way similar. That's good. I so think you could. You. I think you could use it somehow with audiology though, if you're teaching audiology courses. Oh yeah, or I could. We have a concept and then even link it to a lecture or, or, or me talking about. So there's many things that can be done. Yeah. Wow, I'm so excited that somebody from Gallaudet came too. That's that's great because I've never been out there, but I think it's it's just fantastic to have Gallaudet here it in D.C. It's wonderful and it's great coming here and it's nice being part of this and being able to learn as well. So yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad. You. There's never I, I feel like there's never enough attention paid to ASL, yeah. you know, which is shocking because, yeah. you know, when I was in grad school doing linguistics, yeah. we had people doing ASL sort of field work and research, and no one knew anything about ASL, and, and it was just shocking. Why? It's fascinating because it's just another way of learning linguistics too, even that yeah. area and how that works. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember uh, one of my 
Yeah. <laughs> One of the people in the program, she was doing this really interesting research on on how much people can how much people can understand from different from from seeing someone sign from behind. Might that again? Seeing someone sign from from behind or oh, from the for side. Blind. No, no, for ASL. Oh, See, I, I would say from normally I was going to say like if you're talking about behind. Yeah. There's also proof deaf blind where they can feel on their back. Wow, really? Yeah. So when you as soon as you sit behind, because normally it doesn't have think. to be in front, so you yeah, see yeah, yeah. Expression because for grammar, yeah, the face conveys grammar. Right, right, right. And so I don't. So when you sit behind, I'm thinking not ASL, but I forgot what it's called. <laughs> She did this study. You know where library mud box is here? Um, the mud box is downstairs. Downstairs. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. That's the next one we gotta go. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. What's your name again, sir? What's your name again? Uh, my name is Larry Oh, okay. I'm Ken. Uh, it's a great pleasure to meet.